They say that practice makes perfect, but how perfect can practice make a frog? I decided to take up the challenge of crafting the perfect frog. I started by making a frog in just one minute, and then I gave myself an hour to remake that frog, but better. And then finally, I gave myself 10 hours to make the best possible frog these little hands could make. Let's just get started and see what sort of frog we can make in just one minute. Without further ado, let us begin. Oh, yeah. Okay, pointy face and thick body. Let's try and do legs. Make a lot of snakes and then roll them together. Okay, there's one leg. Here's the other back leg. Can we do the front legs real quick? Okay, 30 minutes. A very long noodly leg, a very, very thick leg on this side. Okay, I will, I will. Okay, I will. 11 seconds. I think we can do pupils. I think we can do pupils. Oh my god. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, we, we did it. We actually added pupils. I didn't think we were gonna be able to add pupils, but we did, and honestly, <laughs> besides for the one bloated leg, I guess he got some gout or something. Um, Yeah, this looks like a frog. Okay, so clearly that frog is very ugly and therefore not perfect. But how much closer can we get to the perfect frog if I take a whole hour? Let's find out. I'm going to make this little frog out of black polymer clay and then paint it to look like one of those blue poison dart frogs, which are actually literally just called blue poison dart frogs. They don't have an obscure name, just blue poison dart frog. Anyway, I started off by making the body and then I moved on to the legs. And to make those, I just rolled out some snakes. And to make them bend nicely, I rolled the parts that would become the joints out skinnier, and that would just help it bend smoothly. I have made quite a few poison dart frogs in my time, so I can just kind of eyeball the proportions. It's one of the few animals that I've made more than one time. The other is anteaters. I don't know why, just like anteaters. But looking at the speed, I didn't really have time to look at reference pictures and be like, hmm, the eyeball ridge is a smidge too obtuse, you know, so it was, it was a little rough and ready. And given that I only gave myself an hour for this, I didn't have time to bake it because baking something, even the sides would still take 15 or 20 minutes and then you'd burn your little fingers if you tried to paint it afterwards. And I didn't want to burn my fingers. But just so you know, it is fine to bake acrylic paint at that low of a temperature, just let it dry out all the way so it won't get uglier. Um, but since I didn't have time to bake it, I put little bits of wire into the frog's belly and this will just give it support so it will kind of sort of stand up while I'm painting it and attaching the legs. The legs cannot support the weight of the frog's body because they are about as strong as linguine noodles. And honestly, at this scale, I don't really tend to fiddle around with armatures anyway. It's easier to just bake it more than one time and then let the hardness of the baked clay support the whole critter. Um, I think if I was doing this normally, to make a poison dart frog at this scale would take me two or three or maybe even four hours, depending on how many times I messed up and how complex the pattern I was painting on is. But that is, of course, excluding the amount of time that I would let the paint dry. This paint definitely needs two, if not three, coats to actually not be patchy and ugly. But I didn't have time to add two or three coats, so it was just wet paint on wet paint, and it was gloppy and not very cute. But that's okay. Um, if the black polymer clay pokes through the patchy paint, it'll just look like black spots, right? It won't just make it look ugly, right? Right? I knew that adding all of the black dots would be the most time consuming portion of this little critter so I gave myself ample time to add them. I used literally about a third of the time of this whole creation on just adding black dots. 
I mean, honestly, if I was making this frog at my own pace, it wouldn't have taken me much longer than 20 minutes to add all the dots, maybe 45 minutes. And I would have been able to move the baked figurine around to actually add all of the dots where they're supposed to be, like, like under the arms and the legs and around the belly area. But alas, the frog just had to be ugly. <laughs> But honestly, adding this many dots, there isn't really a way to scale down the amount of time it takes to add all of them. Like you're still adding dot by dot, at least with the tools I have, I'm sure you could make a Franken dotting tool of like 15 dotting tools that you tape together, but that sounds really unnecessary for this. After adding all of the black dots, the frog was done. We were getting up to the wire a little bit, adding some of the dots and then smudging them and then needing to redo them, but we still made it and I even had time to carve a little mouth in. The mouth is uh, very scraggly, but at least this frog can eat and scream. Anyway, I don't think it looks awful. I don't think it's the most hideous thing that has ever been constructed, but it is definitely lumpy in some places. It's just not the most stellar looking frog out there. And so is that all it takes to make a frog look better? You just spend more time on it? One easy thing to do is make it at a slightly larger scale. I call this scale guinea pig scale because things of this size are more or less guinea pig size. This is my favorite scale to work at, at least with polymer clay, because you can add a decent amount of detail without it being super fiddly or small details being so fragile and brittle that they fall off after baking stuff. But it also isn't so big that you need a super robust armature to make it. Usually you can just cobble together some tin foil and wire and like, it'll stand up. So that's what I did. I made an armature. I wrapped some clay around it. I fiddled around with it till it looked like a frog and threw it in the oven and oh man, it's, it's kind of ugly. <sighs> like the body is too long and skinny. The legs are way too long and, and besides they're posed all wrong and all the toes are so thin that they snapped off as I was taking the frog off of the baking sheet. Just no, this, this isn't a perfect frog. There's just no salvaging this. And so even though I'd spent around seven hours making this frog, I decided to start over. I knew that more time wasn't gonna make this frog any better. So I restarted and I corrected my mistakes. The first thing I did instead of making the armature first was that I made the body out of solid clay. For me, it's way easier to sculpt and get the shape and proportions right. Clay just makes more sense in my hand. But since it was polymer clay and therefore pretty dense and heavy, I cut it in half and I scooped out the excess clay from the middle. Kind of like what you do for ceramics so it doesn't blow up in the kiln. And then I replaced the vacated clay with tin foil because polymer clay doesn't really retain its shape when it's hollowed out like ceramics do, at least in my experience. The next mistake I corrected was with the legs. I added the skeleton of these legs with some thick wire and then I poked holes into the tin foil, not just into the clay. And I fused the wires to the tin foil with just a dollop of hot glue. I shaped the wires into the vague shape of frog legs, added some clay on top of those, and this time all of this didn't really take me quite as long. Like shaping the bodies and the legs, getting the eyes in place, it didn't take me anywhere near as long as the first go around. I think I got this frog in the oven at around the four or the four and a half hour mark versus the six and a half hour mark like for the first frog. Ironically, spending more time on something made it take less time in the future. And I think this is really the way that putting more time into something makes it more perfect. Just spending a lot of time on one thing doesn't really do as much to make that thing better as much as doing one thing over and over and over again makes you better at doing that one thing. I mean, that goes for studying math problems as much as it goes for sculpting frogs. This might not seem super revolutionary, but I mean, if no one tells you this, you might not figure it out on your own. I mean, it took me a while to figure it out. As a formerly quote unquote gifted child, I had to teach myself at like age 20 to study because I never had to before. I had coasted by all throughout high school and even some of my earlier college classes. Yeah, okay, humble brag, whatever. But once my classes got tougher later, I ended up with C's and even having to retake some classes because I had to teach myself how to study while also learning like thermodynamics and multivariable calculus. And since I never took art classes past like eighth grade, I also had to teach myself how to study things artistically. I mean, I think one of my biggest weaknesses is that I'm averse to doing drills. Not sculpting the same thing more than once or maybe twice just makes my products weaker. 
Anyway, I feel like our little hopping lady doesn't really start to come together until I started painting her. Her pattern is based on a reticulated poison dart frog. So her body is covered in orangey, yellowish, goldish stripes and also black stripes. And then her legs are blue with black spots like the frog from the one hour challenge. I will say that one of the most challenging things about sculpting animals over people, um, especially kind of obscure animals like a reticulated poison dart frog is that there are not a whole lot of reference images available. You obviously just can't look in the mirror to be like, yep, that's what a reticulated poison dart frog looks like. At least I can't. I don't know what you look like. I mean, you can get a few pictures of frogs from different angles, but those might be different frogs in different stages of maturity or they're different sexes of the frogs or one is inhaling and one is exhaling. So their chests look like they're different sizes. But the silver lining here is that the human brain isn't quite as adept at processing the size and shape of a random poison dart frog it sees as it is a human figure. So if you make an animal that's like ever so slightly off, it's not going to look like a horrifying abomination, like a bad sculpture of a human might look kind of horrifying. So there's a little bit more wiggle room. Even now, when I was looking up the name of the poison dart frog species that I was making, because in my head, I was just calling it the yellow stripy one with blue legs. When I clicked on the Wikipedia page of the reticulated poison dart frog. The picture of the frog made me think, you know what, I could have made the toes like a little more flat. I could have made the balls at the end of the toe wider. I could have made the hip joints a little bit more prominent and et cetera, et cetera, but that's okay. Um, I think she's so cute. She's definitely in like the top five sculptures I think I've ever made. I think the metallic part is so nice and shiny and she's very pretty and she's a frog. And that's all you can ask in life is for a frog. I actually had frogs at some point, but they died. Don't ask. So ultimately to answer the question, how long does it take to make the best frog possible? All I can say is that it takes more than two weeks. Even though I love my little hippity hoppity lady, she, she isn't a one-to-one -one replica of a poison dart frog. Or I mean, I guess a 20 to one replica because she's kind of big. So here is the progression of poison dart frog. Here's strawberry poison dart frog that I made in just an hour. And this was actually the original frog that I made as part of this challenge, but I would lie and say that I just didn't capture the footage, but honestly, I think it's so ugly. So I actually redid the hour frog challenge after I had made not only the two frogs on the guinea pig scale, but also another couple of random dart frogs. Anyway, here's the first botched bigger frog. And then here is the actually decent bigger frog. But I think where you can see the biggest improvement is between the first hour challenge dart frog and the second hour challenge dart frog. And this is just because the second one I had made after a lot of practice. How long does it actually take to make a perfect frog? Well, it's more than two weeks. It might take months or years, perhaps even even a lifetime. And I don't know if I necessarily want to dedicate my life to the craft of um, making frogs, but also I don't not want to do that because frogs are pretty cool. Okay, thank you for watching. Okay, bye.